scripture will be coming from the book of Nehemiah. If you'll take your Bibles and let's turn to the book of Nehemiah. Uh, there are some Bibles there in the pew racks if you uh, need to uh, use one of those. Nehemiah chapter 4 is where we're going to be looking at uh, today. As you're turning there, uh, this uh, as we uh, did uh, look over all of the Grand Canyon and, and all the, the beautiful sunrises and sunsets uh, across the deserts and all out there, it is just amazing, uh, God's handiwork. Uh, it's uh, as you uh, see what he has done here on this earth. Uh, I've been able to see a lot of amazing things over the years uh, there uh, uh, when we went to Yosemite and uh, Sequoia, uh, Kim and Rana, they've been uh, to those places as well and uh, been down in uh, Honduras uh, and even though it may, a lot of people think, well, that's a third world country, there still was a lot of amazing things there and there in uh, Rio de Janeiro where I've been on mission trips, also down in Chile and then, of course, uh, to walk where Jesus walked when I went over there to uh, Israel, to the Holy Land. It's just been, uh, just, it's just wonderful, the things that I've been able to enjoy. And, and I've realized uh, not everybody may, may get to do things like that, but I hope that you uh, can take some time to uh, do things, even if it's just to see the wonders that are here just close by to us on an everyday basis. I uh, hope that you will take time to see that. We have an event that's coming up. Once again, the Lord working in a uh, working as everything circling around in our universe. And on the 21st of August, uh, we're going to experience a an eclipse that afternoon, and uh, uh, we'll be able to see uh, uh, most of it here in North Carolina. The uh, majority of it will be down across South Carolina. But uh, I, I, I'm just amazed at things like that. And so uh, you may not be, but take time to look at what God has created. Let's stand as we honor God's word as it's being read from the fourth chapter of the book of Nehemiah, beginning with the seventh verse. Now keep in mind, Nehemiah is uh, bringing the people back to, uh, to b rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. Uh, they have been in captivity and the wall has been destroyed and he's bringing them back. But uh, we're going to see some things taking place uh, that take place in our life on an everyday basis uh, when we try to do the work of God. Beginning with the seventh verse, it says, But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Astadites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped up, then they were very wroth. And uh, when you look at verse 6, it says that the wall was about half built. So as all of this was happening, as it was beginning to be, as they saw the progress being made, they were very upset, these outside people. And they conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God, and set a watch against them day and night because of them. And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversaries said, They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them, and slay them, and cause the work to cease. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, we know that we have discouragement that hits us from every side. And Lord, we know that uh, when we are trying to do God's work, whether it be individually or whether it be collectively as a church, we know that Satan is not pleased. Just as these uh, countries that surrounded Jerusalem, uh, just as they uh, were not pleased, we know that Satan is not pleased. Because he knows that if we are doing your work, then more people are going to be coming to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And that unnerves him. And so, Father, we just pray that you will help us to get uh, encouragement today from your word. 
so that we'll be able to see from the children of Israel under the leadership of Nehemiah how we can apply that to our lives as well. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Nehemiah is a very good book uh, that shows how God's people, when doing God's work, will meet up with opposition. We are not immune to it. Just because we are children of God, we're not immune to it. Just because God's people, the children of Israel, they were uh, trying to build the walls back up, they were not immune uh, to opposition from outside. The people of Nehemiah said, let us rise and build up, and Satan, along with his demons, says, let us rise and tear down. And he has done that ever since the beginning of time. He does not like what God does. Everything God does, Satan is going to try to undo it. Satan is going to try to undo it. And this morning I want us to see that God, he is doing his work in his church. But I want us to also beware because just as God is doing his work in his church, Satan is alive and well. The scripture says he's going around like a roaring lion, waiting to devour waiting, he knows what your individual weakness is. He knows what our, our collective weakness is as a church, and he knows where he can grab a hold and bring a stop to God's work. If he can do that, then he can undo people coming to know Jesus as Savior. Discouragement is the best tool he's got. He's got many tools, but the best tool is discouragement. Men, I know you've got a lot of tools, no doubt. Uh, a lot of things that you have in your, your uh, tool shed or in your toolbox. But uh, you know that there's one, one tool in there that you couldn't live without. You've got to have that. And Satan, his is discouragement. There's three things I want us to look at this morning very briefly. The first one is this, is the curse of discouragement. The curse of discouragement. More damage can be done from discouragement than anything else. And good folks can get discouraged. Good folks can get discouraged. Notice who was discouraged. In verse 10 there, what does it start out with? And Judah said, and I, I hope you left your Bibles open because we will be going back to some verses we haven't read yet. On down below what we just read. Nehemiah chapter 4, if you've forgotten what it was. It says, and Judah said. Judah was the cream of the crop. Judah was the tribe of Judah, the chief tribe of Israel. From the tribe of Judah is going, was going to come the Son of God, Jesus now today it would be like the deacons of Nakana Baptist Church rising up and saying, we just can't do this. It can't be done. Or like the Sunday school teacher saying, you can do all you want to try to build up this or to build up that, but it just cannot be done. The cream of the crop, the best of people get discouraged. We should not look at ourselves and think, oh, we are too weak. We are weak as far as God's children are concerned. We don't need, yes, we're weak. We need God in our life. We need his strength. We need his power. But we have to keep this in mind. The best of people can get discouraged. That's the curse. But we don't want to dwell on the curse. We don't like negative. You know, there's a lot of people I'm not going to ask for a show of hands because I know about the number of people that would probably raise their hands in here that watch the news. There are a lot that are uh, coming up. They don't watch the news. Why? There's so much negativity in the news, right? Well, that's what TV is made for. You can get right by that. <laughs> but there's a lot of people that do not watch the news because of all the negative stuff that is in there. Folks, let me tell you something. There's going to be some negative. And we don't like to dwell on it. 
but the curse is there. And so let's move on to what causes it. That's what's very important. What causes it? How can we notice? How can we uh, recognize this has caused the discouragement? The first thing that we find is that they were worn out. And where were they worn out? Right in the middle of it. Like I said in verse 6, it says, So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. Halfway. That's where problems usually start happening, isn't it? How many of you have ever built a house? Had a house built? How many of you? Some of you have. Where did a lot of the problems come? About halfway through it. You know, are we ever going to get this thing done? You know? Are we ever going to get this thing done? They were not so much physically tired as they were mentally. There's been some times I have gone to the hospital with people who, who have been there and family members have been there and they've been in the hospital for a long time. And they say, you know, I can't understand it. I am war slap out. But I haven't done anything. I've been sitting here, you know, helping as much as I can, but I haven't really done that much. I can't understand why I'm wore out. There is something more than just physically being worn out. You can be mentally wore out. You can be emotionally wore out. And that's what they were. They were worn out completely. They had lost their zeal to finish the job. Verse 6 like I said, they were halfway through it. Everyone wants to do it from the start, don't we? Oh, yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and get it. Let's, yeah, we'll, we'll be right there with you. We'll do it. And everybody likes to be there when it's finished up. You know, so everybody, hallelujah, we're finished. <laughs> but it's in that center part that you have problems getting people to help out, isn't it? Halfway through it. Going on this vacation, I, I, you know, I was a little, I, I was a little concerned about us, you know, driving, you know, two thousand miles out there because I knew, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to drive back, <laughs> and and I, you know, there was a time there as when we got ready to start back. I thought, well, of those thirty some odd trains, I've never seen so many trains in all my life. There's some long trains too. And I mean, they were constantly back and forth, going from uh, the middle of the country out to uh, the uh, California coast. And I thought, you know, it'd be so easy to go over there and say, can you take my car back to North Carolina and we'll get on a plane and fly back. <laughs> but we didn't drive it straight through. Oh, I would never have tried that. There was times that Jenny said, Dad, 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 Let's pull over. I'll drive some now. Uh, that was usually when I'd hit the rumble strip about three or four times, you know, uh, having driven so long. <laughs> but we saw a lot, of, a lot of wonderful sights along the way and stopped from time to time. But, you know, going on vacation, about halfway through it is where it really starts to, you know, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Uh, Victoria, she was in the back, back seat. She was wanting to know. How much more time have we got? And uh, Jenny would tell her, you don't want to know. Uh, <laughs> marriage. Starting out. But somewhere along the midway point, we see that so many people have problems. Middle age. So many problems going on. Look at King David. He got into trouble in the middle age of his life. The wall was only half built. The people were worn out. And that's when Satan comes in. He says, all right, they're ready for the picking. The second thing we find is they were weighted down. They had a task to do. And rather than do what God said to do and live one day at a time, they were looking at the job as a total. How many times have you done that in your life? You, you know that there's something that needs to be done and there's things that have to be done along the way but you look at the whole job all at one time and you think, there is no way. There is no way. We need to look at it. There's a little saying that says, life is hard by the yard, but by the inch, it's a cinch. And that is indeed true. It seems like so many times everything feels like it just piles in on top of us. Always remember, 
You have a life to build, a character to build. And sometimes things might feel like it's piling in, but we have to take it one day at a time. There is nothing I can do to go back to tomorrow and undo anything that happened or yesterday, anything that happened in yesterday. There's nothing I can do. Oh, you see these programs on TV where they go back in time. That's TV. That's Hollywood, folks. You can't go back in time and undo anything. And there is no way I can go into the future. They do that too. I can't go into the future and change something. I have today. That's all I'm promised. Thank God I woke up this morning because it gave me another day. That's all I'm promised is today. I am not guaranteed I will wake up tomorrow morning. And so today is what I need to be concerned about. 80% of the things we worry about that we worry about might happen in the future never happen. 80%. We have a life to build. But we have to keep in mind sometimes there's some rubbish that has to be cleared out. Verse 10, Judah said the strength of, of the bearers of burdens is decayed and there is much rubbish, much trash. Sometimes you have to clear the trash out. Those of you who have done any type of construction or uh, doing any type of stuff around your house, you know that there comes a time you have to haul some trash out to finish up. You have to haul some trash out. Now, I'm not talking about the trash can that's sitting in the kitchen. That does need to be hauled out, and if you haven't done it, do it when you get home. We have to have a positive attitude about things, and we need to remember there's going to be some trash in our lives that need to be removed. It may be moral trash. It may be sinful trash. But whatever it is, the Scripture tells us that the power of God, the Holy Spirit, cannot work in your heart and my heart as long as that trash is there, unconfessed sins. We have to confess those sins before him. You don't have to confess them to me. There ain't a thing I can do except pray for you about those things. You don't have to confess them before this church. We're not running uh, the, you know, the Mississippi squirrel thing. We're not doing that. You have to confess it to God. You have to confess it to him. He's the only one that can do anything about it. Take it to Jesus and get rid of it today. Get rid of it today. Thirdly, it says in verse 11, and our adversary said, they sh uh, the ch in other words, the children of Israel shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst of them and slay them and cause the work to cease. They were wrought. They were wrought. They were fearful. They said, you know, we don't know when these people are going to do it. They've said themselves. They've said word. You don't know when we're going to come, but we're, going to, we're coming. We're coming. We're going to come in the middle of you, and we're going to tear everything down. We're going to kill every one of you. And the devil is always ready to take your security away. It may be taking your job away. It may be taking a member of your family away. It may be taking whatever your health away. Whatever it is that is your security blanket, God, God is there to give to you the security you need, but Satan is there to try to take it away. The devil even worked among the people themselves. Look at verse 12. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, they're coming, they're coming. Have you ever had somebody do that? It's constant. They're going to come, they're going to come. They're going to take, they're going to, they're going to destroy everything. That, these were people that were within their group. It'd be like, you know, some, you know, people within the church itself uh, or someone close to you, individually-wise, constantly. It seems like every time you turn around, they're saying, you know, <laughs> it's going to fail. It's going to fail. It's going to fail. Ten times it says they said that. Folks, you can either be a helper or you can be a herder. But I think most of us here today would want to be more a helper than we would be anything else. We want to be the solution, not the problem. But folks, 
there's a cure. There's a cure. Nehemiah was the right leader for these people. Look at verse 13. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall and on the higher places, I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. He armed them. Let me tell you something. When you know there's an enemy out there, they already got word, we're coming for you. They already heard they were coming for you. They heard it 10 times from the neighbor next to them. They're coming for you. You better be ready. The Bible says Satan is going around like a roaring lion waiting to devour. He's waiting to get each one of us. He knows our weaknesses. And if he knows our weaknesses, we would be just as just as dumb as we could be to walk out the doors of this church and not be ready to take on Satan. We know, we know he's there. Paul told the people of Ephesus, put on the whole armor of God. Secondly, he assured the people, verse 14, and I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, be not afraid of them. He assured them. He said, the Lord, which is great and terrible, he was letting them know he was going to be with them. Folks, let me tell you something. Greater is he that is in, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If God is for us, who could be against us? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man may say or might do to me. Why do we get discouraged? We take our eyes off God. We need to keep them on God. If you get tired, trouble, ask. Think on God. Folks, God is still in charge. If you look at the news, and if you see all the terrible things that are going on, or might can go on, keep this in mind. God is still in charge. And there may be chaos here on this earth, but there is no chaos in heaven. There's no chaos in heaven. Thirdly, in the last part of that verse, and fight for your brethren, Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. Fight for your houses. If nothing else, fight for those who are going to be taking over in the years to come. Let me tell you something. We got a lot of children and a lot of young people in our community, in our church. And if nothing else, we need to be fighting that they have a good future. Keep that in mind, mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, aunts, uncles. Fourthly, he applied them. Nehemiah knew that the best remedy for discouragement was to move ahead working. Keep moving. Don't look at the whole job. Take it a day at a time. No burden given to us that we, are, we can't handle, Scripture says. But God did not tell you to take on the whole burden of three or four weeks to come. He said, take it on for today. The Lord knows what we can handle. He told them, put a sword in one hand and a trowel in the other. And they worked in shifts. Some watched while others worked. And others were resting. And then they'd trade out. They would keep switching around. We are to be building God's kingdom. And when we battle Satan... At the same time, we need to keep God in front of us the whole time. And above all, we don't need to be a crowd pleaser. Because when we become a crowd pleaser, what have we become? A Satan pleaser. And fifthly, verse 19 and 20. And I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, the work is great and large. And we are separated upon this wall. We're one far from another. They were stretched out. As, I, as we went to the Holy Land and we saw the wall around Jerusalem, it ain't no small wall. It ain't no small city. It, went way, it goes a long way around there. And in that place thereof you hear the sound of the trumpet, 
resort ye thither unto us, our God shall fight for us. In other words, he assembled them together. That's what we're doing right now. That is what we're doing right now. We have come together today. A lot of people think, well, you know, having church on Sundays, just see how many you can get to come. That's not it. I don't know about you, but I need encouragement each week. And every time I come to God's house, that's what you get is encouragement. And coming together. Folks, let me tell you something. Especially in the time and age that we're living at now, every church across Columbus County and some 21 churches just in the southeastern part of Columbus County alone, every single one of them ought to be packed and full with chairs down the aisles of individuals coming together, assembling together. Nehemiah, they were spread out, but he said, come. When you hear the trumpet, come, join with us. We need to come together to encourage each other. God fought for them. When God's people come together, folks, there's no substitute. Yeah, you can watch something on TV, yes. Some people, that's all they can do. And, and, and those, there's uh, some that will be watching this on YouTube. Uh, there's, you know, I realize there's some people who can't get out. But if you are physically able to get out, you need to be in God's house. You need to be in God's house. There's nothing like being there in person. It's just like, you know, I've seen pictures, and I can show you all the pictures I want to of the Grand Canyon. But you know what? To stand there and look down one mile down into the, the bottom of a valley, there's a lot of difference than looking at it in a, in a picture. So many things you have to be there to look at. You have to be there to see it. And we need to be here. To, to experience God's word working. Finally, he admonished them. Verses 21 through 23. So we labored in the work, and half of them held their spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise, at the same time, said I unto the people, let every one with his servant lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night they may be a guard to us and labor on the day. So neither I nor the, my brethren nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saving that every one put them off for washing. He said, we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready. He told them, yes, we're going to be able to do this, but keep in mind, Satan hasn't finished. Be ready. Folks, we have to keep our knees on the floor. We have to keep our faces toward his word. We need to love one another as the Lord has loved us. Jesus said, I come that you may have life more abundantly. I don't know about you. I'm a child of God, and I know many of you are. I also know that there's some of you that need to accept him as Lord and Savior. There's no, no question of that. You know that yourself. But folks, let me say this. I I've, I've saw an article where a man is doing some, uh, some assemblies uh, down in Atlanta, Georgia. He's come from California. And he is, he is spreading the word, there is no hell. Uh, and, and he's grow, growing a lot of crowds. There's a lot of people that want to believe there is no hell. But we know what the Bible says. We know what the Bible says. And let me, say, let me say this. I'm a Christian. And folks, I'll tell you this morning, I'd be a Christian even if there wasn't a heaven or hell. I'd be a Christian serving my Lord and Savior. What about you? What about you? Would you bow your heads in prayer? In just a moment, we're going to have an invitation. And in this invitation, you have the opportunity to respond to God's leading in your life.
You may say, how do I know that God is leading? What has he impressed upon you this morning? You say, well, I haven't been impressed by anything. Well, then you need to search your heart. The Holy Spirit cannot minister to us if we've got sin in our life. And so first of all, if you are not a Christian, you need to come this morning and you need to accept him as Lord and Savior. How do you do that? Accept the fact that we are all born into sin. You were born into sin. I was born into sin. The only person that was not born into sin was Jesus Christ. There comes a time in our lives that we have to acknowledge that we have a decision to make. And Jesus prepared for that by dying on the cross. He gives you the opportunity to accept him dying in your stead and my stead for the sins that we have committed, that we can have eternal life. And so this morning, do you believe that? Do you believe that Jesus can forgive you of your sins? Do you believe he died for you? If you have accepted that and if you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and that he can save you, that he can forgive you of the sins in your life, then you need to confess with your mouth. What do I do with that, preacher? You come forward and you say, Pastor, this morning I profess faith in Christ. This morning I ask Jesus to come into my heart. Maybe you've done it before, but you've never come forward. Today's the day that you need to do it. And maybe you haven't ever followed through in baptism. You say, well, why do I have to do that? Jesus was baptized. He wasn't a sinner. But he was baptized at the beginning of his ministry here on this earth. And we exercise baptism at the beginning of our lives as Christians. It shows to people, indeed, something has happened to me on the inside. It's a physical show of what has happened on the inside. And I would urge anybody that would watch this video to do the same and, and to get with your pastor, and if you don't have a pastor, to get in a church somewhere close to you and do that very thing. Christians, is there rubble in your life? Is there, is there trash in your life that needs to be removed? Today, you need to come and lay it here at the altar. Just say, Lord, take it from me. Help me to remove the trash out of my life. I want to live closer to you. Father, as we come to you right now, we come surrendering everything that we've got. Help us to, to give to you our lives that we can leave from here this morning saying, our lives have been not just changed, but transformed. For we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is number 596, I Surrender All. Would you stand as we, we sing, you come as God leads. Would you step out right now? Things in your life that need to be put aside. Maybe there's someone you need to be praying for.